Hello, welcome to Course 5 Compass Live. I'm David McBride from Course 5 Intelligence. Excited to be here today and excited to welcome my guest, Rameshwar Balangu. Thank you, Rameshwar, for joining. Uh, I'd like to Thanks, give a, I'd love to, to tell our audience about you, give a, a, an introduction of your background. Uh, you have over 20 years of executive experience in the enterprise software industry with roles in product marketing, product management, product strategy, business development, uh, software development. You're currently leading uh, automation at Avaya, uh, where you focus on converting strategy to execution using data and automation. Uh, you're also an advisor in the cybersecurity, blockchain, and esports space. Uh, you you run one of the largest intelligent automation uh, meetup groups in the US, DFW RPA AI, and you manage the Intelligent Automation Summit. You're a busy guy. I presume so. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find time to do all that? Uh, it's just passion. Yeah. Cool. Well, as part of that passion, I'm really excited that you're uh, you're willing to sp spend the next 25 minutes or so with us. Um, we are we're going to talk about platform strategy and digital transformation. And as Course Five is in the digital transformation business, we we talk to our customers and help our customers with digital transformation, but we've found that digital transformation can mean different things to different people, um, as can platform strategy. Both of these terms um, can are somewhat up for interpretation um, in terms of their meaning and their breadth. I, I'd love to hear your, your perspective on what is digital transformation. Hi, Dave. Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, I hope everyone is safe. You know, we have a pandemic and what have you. Uh, so. You know, uh, prior to 2020, you know, there's actually blogs and polls on LinkedIn, very funny memes is who transformed digital, who transformed the company? Was it the CEO, CIO? And then in the C option, we see pandemic. Very rightly said, it's a pandemic that has accelerated. And, you know, uh, this is a question that Bigot says, did we do a digital transformation or in the name of digital transformation, did we digitize? I leave the answer to you. So, you know, things, nobody, you know, you take the government sector, you take the schools, you take far away, you know, low villages, you know, this is in India, we call villages. You know, they never dreamt of being remote, forget in India, even in US, you go to the government office, did you ask any government official, what does remote mean? No way, it's forbidden. Things change lopsided. When kids, uh, my kid, my younger one is eight years old, he said, dad was Zoom created for the pandemic. So the whole uh, epidemic or the meaning of what digital transformation has changed fundamentally in 2020. I think I would say late 2019. Things have accelerated, but never before. Things that we never dreamt, you know, are now possible. You know, you know, we had this big problem, you know, we were running out of bathroom tissues. That's a big problem for us. But the supply chain came back, fought back. So if you start seeing all of this, you know, one, it truly means for me, you know, like you said, Dave, well said, Digital transformation is an English meaning, but it means a lot to many, many people. Talk to different industries, everybody talks it. At least for me, I don't care what it means. All I do mean is how does it serve me? How does mm -hmm. it make my experience better? Can I see this experience consistently, seamlessly across anywhere, anytime? That is digital transformation to me. Even, you know, I keep telling that if I use an Excel, and if Excel, I don't know if you've seen the latest features of Excel, it has AI embedded in it. So you, you drop in three stock tickers and you say stock symbol, it not just populates the logos, but actually it shows you the price. I don't care, it, it, that's transformation for me. I don't, even if it's Excel, but look at the power, what it is bringing. This is transformation to me. I you know. You know, what I like about that example, the Excel example is that that's a very, a small thing on the face of it, um, but it's it's one of of many small things that add yeah, up exactly. and, and build on each other. And maybe that's maybe that's we're getting into the concept of a platform. Excel could be a platform, and they create this automation concept to to in, incorporate information from different sources in in lots of different small ways that kind of work together. Yeah. Is that so? Let's talk about platform yeah. strategy for a minute. What, so, what does so platform strategy? You hit it on the book side. Basically, platforms occur in bits and pieces. Now, you know, there's this thing like when you say platform, everybody loves to talk of Uber, Airbnb, Netflix. Let's make it a point blank fact. We are not Uber. 
if we were those, you know, everybody loves to drink, nothing wrong, there's a way. But the fact is we're not there. The whole definition of platform has been existential, you know, especially since Windows created it. We had, you know, when Windows was created, you know, we had Office, but when Windows was created, think about it. They needed a hardware manufacturer like Dell or IBM, what have you. They needed a chip manufacturer like Intel, and then they needed UI. So if you really see, you know, platforms have been there. What's different from a platform that's of yesteryears and now is what we call is a community effect. So basically platforms in today have three things. Basically there's a technology layer where people come to interact. You would call it an interaction layer, but then you have your producers and your consumers coming together, talking to each other, removing the intermediaries and providing value uh, consistently. We were a linear economy where we used to push everything to the consumer. You like it, you take it, you don't like it, you still move on, we keep shoving it. Things are now different. It's a circular economy and you'll hear me few words that you've been hearing as, you know, people talk of linear economy, circular economy, where there is constant interaction. So when we mean by a platform economy, it's not just technology, what we mean is how is the value being created consistently. So uh, a platform basically has a couple of things, is boundaryless. You and I, you know, in the past, you know, we used to use Zoom, but now everything is virtual. You just pick up a call, you could do a Zoom, you know, Teams is a classic example. You could have multiple ways of communication. What is happening is we had a communication, we left it off, and then I speak to Ashwin. Ashwin actually has the trail back of my conversation. So we are not starting it from fresh. We are starting it, and, and, and if you see here, look at the power of these platforms. Uh, I'm in Dallas, probably you're elsewhere. Ashwin might be in India. It's boundaryless. And then, you know, the big thing of platform is communities. And when I mean communities, and, um, you know, I'm not endorsing anyone, by far, um, what I've seen is uh, I work with, um, or I have friends in gaming. Yeah. What gaming industry has taught me is communities. Mm -hmm. They will flock if you have seen Roblox, or if you have seen Minecraft, sure. they follow their groups. So they don't go like WhatsApp or Signal. In Signal, I, I mean, I'm not endorsing, sorry. Just because you had 100 phones, it buzzes you every time saying, these are all the people. I don't want a privacy intrusion. This right. community yeah. is the group of people whom I know or whom I'm willing to equip. So I have this free conversation. That's why if you see, Discord is a hit. And that's why Microsoft is going behind. I see Microsoft is one of the, I'll not take Uber, Netflix, Airbnb examples because there's time a dozen about it. But yeah. I'm going to change a little bit on Microsoft or somebody else whom you don't know. Basically, these communities go like Facebook, you know, you and I have friends, you talk to your friends, your family, you have this, and then they create it. What we call is a network effect, meaning right. there's a Merkel's law, not the Moore's law, where you have yeah. this network effect where it cascades. The network could be positive, negative, depends, you know, um, not all going into politics, you know, when we had this issue in the White House running, social media on Twitter and Google and Facebook were slammed of why they're not stopping it. But the other right. side is, you know, that's democracy. We're not in here for politics, we are talking about platform and technology, but it is the network effects, the cross boundary, our platform being horizontal, everybody can reach and consistently creating value across. Maybe, so as long as we're, sorry, good. You know, I was thinking democracy is kind of a platform, you, you could sort of say, and, and it it, but, but that requires that, that there's this equal participation um, and, and that there's this, I guess, expansion of, of what it means, but also playing by the rules or, or whatever. This isn't, I don't want to get political, but, but the, the gaming aspect in the community is really interesting. I look back on when my son, who's now 19, uh, my oldest, played Minecraft. He was, what well, this was maybe 10 years ago. He, he learned how to use Skype because he wanted a way to, to talk with his friends while they were playing Minecraft. And, and now my, my, my youngest, who's 12, uh, plays Minecraft and she plays a lot. You know, the, the dream SMP is, is an ever-present force in, in our house these days. She, she has uh, a connection with her friends via Discord going on. And so the concept of, uh, you know, I guess Microsoft is, is considering purchasing, or there's, there's a rumor out there. 
They, they did. It. Okay, so Microsoft purchased Discord. Uh, it, it makes a lot of sense from a platform perspective because their users have this innate desire to augment their gaming experience with their community through real-time communication. Sure. Yeah, actually, crypto is for the same reason going crazy. Now, we'll not talk crypto because it means, but crypto is a community-led this thing, and that's why it's going gangbusters. GameStop is an example, and actually, you know, it, it, it's paradigm. You know, when I talk of platform, I keep thinking, you know, uh, if you Google platform, everybody talks, and I keep selling Uber, Airbnb. What sure. they say is they have no physical assets. Great. But are you, if your industry has physical assets, are you going to tell me, are you going to ditch? So there's a difference of platformization versus platform readiness. Not every company can make their products platform. You know, we, we can't be in a virtual world. We have sure. physical assets. See, ultimately, if Airbnb was successful, but it did partner with Marriott and the local hotel providers who did it. So there was physical existence. In my opinion, again, don't count me wrong, Marriott has a better upper stake. So Marriott was looking at this platform and said, shit, we missed this trade. But if you really see, you know, they're coming by big, fast and furious with the platform because they have the physical asset. I, I think, you know, it, it's both tantos and, but actually these guys have more leeway. Maybe these yeah. guys have the early advantage, but so, you, you know, Every company should think in a platform approach from the network effect and the scale of economies and consistent thing. But doesn't mean you ship your, you know, you desert your ship and say, we're not going to do any physical. In fact, if you see Amazon has its own fulfillment stores. Why? Because they don't have to rely on the third party. They do have. But when you have your in-house, you can be much more stronger and resilient. So yeah. if you read these articles, they'll say all these platforms have no physical assets. I would differ on that. Yeah. You need physical class, a digital platform to create value. I was um, I, I was remarking with my wife the other day. We went to uh, Chick Fil A to pick up some food, and we ordered via the app, uh, and and the food was ready for us when we got there to to the store. It just for me, this was this interesting combination of um, software combining with real. Like I pushed a bunch of buttons on, on my phone, and out comes food. Um, just the, the, the intersection between software bits, ones and zeros into, into real assets uh, is a really interesting point of, of, of intersection. So I really, I, I like that and can understand where you're talking about the, uh, the, the benefit Actually, of assets. I was looking at the Microsoft conference, Dave. So with 5G and now platforms are taking, I believe, I haven't seen it, but I believe uh, actually, for fun, I created on a LinkedIn my troll called Intergalactic Automation. Okay. But after seeing, you know, so there's a new concept of metaverse. I don't know if you follow that metaverse no. concept. No. So, so um, thanks to Elon Musk, you know, he's created a Neuralink, and then we have a fabulous Starlink. What's happening is with the 5G, AR and VR are going to go mainstream. That's what okay. I call it reality. So let's take your example. You went to, by the way, I, you know, um, Chick-fil-A is great. Um, you, you used your platform, which is your phone. So you got an experience and the payment was easy. You just drove yeah. to, you picked it. Now, what would have, you know, been, so platforms, you can talk all the jargon. It is that seamless experience and the value you're getting it. You're getting it just in time, the ease with which. When you ordered this, you want to get a feel of it. So with this immersive reality, when you ordered it, you want to know the bread, the softness, the texture of the bread. Is it good? Is it hard? Maybe not. You know, right now you have to think. You have to visually think it. But if I can feel it in an immersive reality, now it becomes different. So this one, when I started talking to my friend, um, and actually, so very soon we're going to get confused between a physical reality and a virtual reality and a virtual. Mm -hmm. We will have halos sitting beside me. Actually, if I want to speak to you and we both want to have a cup of coffee, we don't yeah. get Zoom anymore. I just use my immersive reality and say, hey, Dave, let's have a cup of coffee. You're here. We're both having a cup of coffee. This is the new level of experience that we are going in. How is this possible? That's platforms, but technology. So it is exciting, but it, it scares me because um, I'm, I'm not a baby boomer, but I'm not Gen X. I think I'm a baby boomer, um, <laughs> but it scares the hell out of me. How do I perceive this? It's great, fantastic, and, and maybe like... Uh, 
you know, I don't know if you follow Michio Kaku. Uh, he's an astrophysicist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I love him. He keeps telling, you know, the days are there where our kids will be in Mars. And thanks to Neuralink and Starlink, where I think from here, and let's say my kids or your kids, their kids are in Mars. I'm sure that's going to happen. And they want to talk to, talk to you. So when the thing from their brain, a hollow image of them is created as you as grandpa, grandpa, yeah. and then you run through your experiences and say, uh, gra grandson, perhaps this is the best way to do it. Now think of how we are taking this immersive reality to the physical reality and being a companion. This is the next level of experience provided by platforms. It sounds for high five, but it's not a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. I want to remind any of our of our listeners or our audience to uh, feel free to post any questions that you might have uh, for for Ramishwar. We'd love to hear your comments or thoughts. Um, you know, it strikes me as you describe that potential future, uh, that that metaverse concept, Ramishwar, that that the uh, there there could become a premium on authenticity, on on real experiences. Um, or, or, or maybe not. Maybe the fidelity of the virtual experience will be so high eventually that the, the line between virtual and, and authentic doesn't is blurred, and, and, and that's just a, a word. But you did, any thoughts you on that? Bring up a, you did bring up a right, a great conversation. This was the one that I had in the morning. Uh, the the problem that we will have to deal with or have to evolve with. Um, I don't know if you've seen today Facebook or uh, last week, half a million users have been yeah. faced. Half right? a billion. Yeah. Half a million. Half a billion, sorry, not a half a million. In fact, I've heard even Zuckerberg's phone book was also revealed. Right. right. Uh, actually, I'm happy because he extracted the data and made his monetization model. I'm happy even he's hacked as well, in a way. Um, yeah. I don't use Facebook. I'm sure he's changed but, his phone. Yeah, yeah, they, they're rich. They can do anything. But what it is is um, it brings an angle which I wasn't sure whether it should bring us. Blockchain never before is coming back into force, you know, with the hacks and all. Why, why am I bringing it? Because the only way to keep that authenticity, and now, you know, you've seen deep fakes. I don't know if you've seen this. If you Google sure. avocado, you can see avocado chairs. Think of the level of the, what we call the GPT-3 or the models that are coming out, level how, how it can fabricate, synthesize an essay or a picture or whatnot. For a common man, how would it be possible? You know, we, we, we said we'll use biometric for authenticity. But with deep fakes, if you can fake the hell out of me and you, even AI can't detect it. So this is where, for an authenticity, blockchain comes in. But we can mm -hmm. keep that separately. But yes, that's a big problem to deal with. And platforms will have to deal with authenticity. And actually, when you deal with authenticity, across country, across industry, regulation can come into problem. Will not dwell too much into politics, but if you see China is country mm -hmm. as a platform. These are technology challenges, regulatory challenges, and security and social challenges. Because in the world of an enterprise, when you and I are there, I have your information PII, you have my information, as long as you're a customer in my records or I'm in a, as a customer in yours. Because of the network, you're bringing your what, what do you call your your tribe or your community? And I'm bringing my tribe. Now we both are network. How do we do a GDPR CCPA? I can do in my local domain, but since you're connected with me, I'm going cross boundary. In this case, it's cross um, cross state. So regulation will have a complicated effect, and it actually there's no easy answer. In fact, tech industry, the big big tech has been bullying. You've seen what. What has happened in Australia and in India, where the Indian government stepped up and said, you know, you don't tame your ways, we're going to jail you. So there's going to be a clash between the countries. There's going to be a clash between the cultures. Yeah. Um, there's something which I came to know yesterday, again, will not be political. These platforms are catered for these Gen Z, which are driving community. What's happening is AI has been traditionally been biased towards men. You, you know that thing of the bias. The Gen Z, for a good reason, is fighting for a social cause, is LGBT. And then they are talking now of LGBTQ+, which I'm still trying to ever. So when platforms are all about value and personalized experience, the technology behind that should evolve. Actually, it's evolving. And, you know, be very personalized. 
you know sure. whether it's LGBTQ plus or this or what what have you but these are challenges that the platform will have to evolve and but the, the beauty of what i'm seeing is technology is taking rapid strides the only fear i have is government is not able to catch up i wish the governments have younger people no offense older i'm old so i can't say that but you know this gen z is whacking the our business models and i mean it for a good way because yeah. when i talk to the sports companies these kids look different you know there's a game called one click all you have to do is just click 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 whoever clicks maximum gets the winner points and that company is making millions of dollars because they have a robust platform and a community mm-hmm. so things that we think are weird the gen z is driving new models and platforms are the only ways to support these newer business models the traditional brick and mortar you know that digital uh, everybody gave an example if you are looking at a platform basically now this comes back as if you want to call yourself as a digitally transformed company the traditional metrics of economic improvement cost reduction lean management all stay staying but it is this platform strategy and platforms you can't be overnight they're modular maybe we start with the payment finance system and it and then these teams evolve and join uh, you know together so how do we make our customer journey platform seamless all the way from a check in to a ticketing to a finance so we do these things bits and silos silos and bits you know and then ultimately you scale so you become a platform for a company but if you truly want to have the network effect your platform has to integrate with others open up the boundaries help developers and partners to co-facilitate and then this constant interaction and this personalized experience until you provide that if you read any digital transformation this is what you say right if you read it on a platform this is what you say so if you really see platform technologies or platform as a concept supports your digital transformation so when you and i discussed this i said these two are inseparable that's how sure. i view it that's really interesting i i think about the the concept of of young people that you described having uh high expectations for seamless experiences across technical or or other kinds of boundaries uh as as a driving force in digital transformation digital transformation um enabling digital experiences across these these boundaries facilitate uh more of a platform approach which means building blocks adding components adding experiences um and as as in many trends in the world uh the young people kind of lead the way and then the rest of us um grab on and and, and hold on and learn and um yeah you know I, i come i come at this from a a measurement and analytics perspective uh i'm curious to hear if you have any thoughts on on how we measure the success of uh of 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 platforms um honest uh, so so basically let me take it this way yeah uh um from a strategy you know off late everybody's been talking of okrs i hope yeah. you've heard about right. So uh, and everybody, this is what is everybody's okay. I also started from Google and the Intels, but we're not Google. Uh, you know the Googles and all. So uh, basically, you know, um, you define your three to five metrics or three to five objectives and what they can accomplish from a platform. That's more at a strategic level. But from a metric standpoint, you know, there are things like you know we had the traditional NPS and all. They don't work. What works is a ZCR kind of a metric, zero contact resolution. meaning mm. how i am as a customer onboarded and how am i taken care of to provide this experience you have your metrics as the number of clicks number of this things you know basically this gen z uh, has a couple of cool patterns they don't like cash they hate cash i'm sure you're seeing it with your kid um mm-hmm. everything has to be on the phone yeah the tv has to be on the phone and they would yep. prefer less in the browser um yep. second thing is um they are the community driven so yep. the metric for you is number of clicks like i said this this year how easy yep. it is for you to do this uh, you know I, again it, there are many many metrics but these are some of the metrics that i see is this this year and how easy is this experience and actually how much time and they hate latency so latency is they, they just hate latency so right. latency is one right. more fact of the direct impact because if they don't like it they're going to leave so when you do this economic impact you have to do a modeling of communities like if you see today any 
follower you know or an influencer you see their communities uh, basically if you do the whatsapp map now there are many many for every user you have a dollar that's how they have paid billion i think um the other day i was reading every search or every user of us we get 160 dollars for google so so basically when you are following you know there is this class concept of chicken or egg do we build the platform first or do we get the community so sure. if we are target communities maybe you have this dollar value what would it mean from a monetization so in order to get this you know we have this traditional cost of acquisition cost but once i have this what kind of revenue and revenue could be direct where they become subscription but indirect like they influencing they partnering they building apps so there is this indirect monetization so there are multiple ways to manage this metrics interesting yeah zcr is something worth uh, worth paying attention to I, i like that and 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 latency and uh, community um all important aspects you can see that in in customer behavior now becoming more um relevant in in the pandemic and post pandemic world as we wrap up here uh last couple of thoughts um if you have oh, yeah. on, on <laughs> yeah we we've, we've already you know fast conversation um any thoughts on ideas for getting started or learning more so um, basically i've learned it through platform revolution by sangeet paul chaudhary great guy yeah. Uh, MIT courses are pretty good, but if you can't pay Sangeet Paul Chaudhary, I'm not endorsing anyone, but I love all of them. Uh, there are some. Uh, uh, if you go to YouTube, just Google platform. You know, Gartner and McKinsey's are very good. In fact, Infotech is very good. So Gartner, McKinsey, Infotech are three vendor analysts. But if you can't get access to them, go to Google or follow YouTube, and you can follow Sangeet Paul Chaudhary. If you can read his books, that's great. Uh, MIT, I would. you know i've been following mit but i myself didn't do an enrollment but the big thing is there is this platform groups in linkedin and in twitter uh, instagram keep following you know even i would say i myself am a, a novice in this i'm learning it with, with these kids but actually if you really want to get start speaking to the kids yeah if you see again i'm i'm not endorsing microsoft but if you see the microsoft direction they bought minecraft they bought discord they bought get Git is a community for developers. Minecraft is a community for gamers. Discord is a community for gamers and crypto guys. So you know, follow the companies that are focused on platform. ServiceNow, Oracle, SAP are also platform, but they are more in enterprise. I see the new trends of Gen Z driving it. If GameStop is an indication, all of us need to sit up and write. There is no logic of how GameStop went. but if you talk to your kids my elder one is 12 and he and his friends kept shouting on us we told you follow gamestop buy gamestop gamestop what did i do no i'm i'm, a, I'm an old guy right why would i listen to the stupid economics so uh, the economics 101 dot what we have learned we have to unlearn so yeah. if you want to really understand where platforms are heading look at gen z talk to your kids i think it's gen y probably the younger kids so yeah. this is where you know in addition to listening to everything listen to these kids they are teaching us new business models which we won't have happen and the immersive reality i told you could be a game changer and i think it's going to happen well that's a great concept to end on i mean what what better way to uh to have a conversation with with uh, the younger generation than to talk about something that they are interested in and they are passionate about um and clearly if 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 our children are any indicators they're passionate about uh gaming and and platforms and maybe not they might they might not even call it a platform but um that's what it is uh, it's an experience so that it, it, a seamless uh, enjoyable experience well th- we got to wrap it up there this has been a, a very instructive and interesting conversation thank you rameshwar um my pleasure david i've been talking with rameshwar balangu uh, of avaya head of automation there about platform strategies and digital transformations and uh zero contact ref- uh, resolution and, and and discord and uh lots of really exciting things so uh go out there and and talk to the younger generation thanks everybody for joining and have a great day bye